Back in the 1990s, paleontologists in Argentina uncovered a claw the size of a man's hand, curved, razor sharp and unmistakably raptor-like. At first, they thought they'd found a monster, a super-sized dromaeosaur, a predator bigger than Utah raptor, armed with killing talons that could tear through bone. But the deeper they dug, the stranger it became. This was no ordinary raptor. In fact, it might have not even been a raptor at all. Today, we're unraveling the mystery of a lineage that has defied classification, crossed continents, and rewrote what we thought we knew about predatory dinosaurs. This is the story of the Megaraptorans, the raptors that weren't raptors at all. It began in Patagonia in 1996. A massive curved claw was unearthed, sleek, raptor-like, and unlike anything seen before. It was named Megaraptor Namanhueki, Giant Thief. At first, paleontologists assumed it was a gigantic dromaeosaur, a killer-clawed super raptor the size of a bus. That idea exploded through the media. The biggest raptor ever found, headlines said. But when more fossils appeared, that interpretation crumbled. The claw wasn't from the foot at all, as first thought. It was from the hand. And it turned out that Megaraptor was only just the beginning. Over the next two decades, more discoveries appeared across the southern continents. Fukui Raptor in Japan, Australovenator in Australia, Orca Raptor, Aeoni Raptor, and Murus Raptor in Argentina. Each had the same hallmarks. Long, muscular arms, huge hand claws, lightly built skeletons, and narrow skulls filled with serrated, slicing teeth. These animals weren't giant raptors at all. They were a distinct branch of predatory dinosaurs, now grouped under the name Megaraptoridae, part of the wider Megaraptora clade. They lived roughly 105 to 70 million years ago and ranged across the southern supercontinent Gondwana and parts of Asia, showing how widespread and adaptable this group truly was. But if they weren't true raptors, then what were they? Classifying Megaraptorans has been one of the great debates in modern paleontology. At first, their long arms and slashing claws suggested a link to Allosaurus, the powerful Jurassic predator line known for its robust builds and grasping forelimbs. Later studies placed them within the Neovenatoridae, a family of late surviving Allosauroids. But CT scans and detailed analysis of their skulls and hips began to show something unexpected, traits shared with early Tyrannosauroids. That discovery sent shockwaves throughout the field. If correct, it means that Megaraptorans weren't holdouts from the Jurassic, but early cousins of Tyrannosaurus rex that evolved along a completely different path. Instead of losing their arms like northern Tyrannosaurs, they kept them and turned them into their primary weapons. Even now, studies continue to swing between the two interpretations. The truth may lie somewhere in between, a transitional group bridging two great predator dynasties. Whatever their ancestry, the Megaraptorans were built for agility and control. They weren't hulking bone crushers, they were athletes, long-legged, deep-chested, and surprisingly lightweight for their sizes. A typical Megaraptoran ranged from 6 to 9 meters long, about the length of a bus, but with half of the weight of a Tyrannosaurus. Their skulls were narrow and lightly built, their teeth were small and sharp, perfect for slicing flesh rather than pulverizing bone. But their arms were extraordinary, long, flexible, and ending in three claws that could reach up to 30 centimeters in length. Muscle attachments on the shoulder and chest suggested enormous pulling strength, ideal for grasping struggling prey. They may have ambushed smaller dinosaurs, using their claws to latch on and deliver slashing wounds, or targeted juvenile titanosaurs, using teamwork or opportunism to bring them down. In short, they hunted with finesse, not force, capable of lifting their prey to their mouths. Megaraptorans thrived during a time of giants. Their world was dominated by enormous herbivores. Titanosaurs that could stretch up to 40 tons or more, and smaller prey like Gasparinosaurus and Lielinosaurus. The southern continents were breaking apart, creating isolated ecosystems across Gondwana. In these lands, where abelosaurids were shorter faced and stockier, Megaraptorans filled a different niche. Fast, long armed predators built for speed and accuracy. They were the agile hunters of the southern Cretaceous. By the final stages of the Cretaceous, Megaraptorans were in decline. South America's ecosystem changed. Forests turned into open plains and competition from abelosaurids intensified. In Australia, climate shifts likely fragmented their habitats. By around 70 million years ago, they disappeared from the fossil record. When the asteroid struck a few million years later, they were already gone. Their story ended quietly, overshadowed by the rise of the Tyrannosaurs to the north. Today, the Megaraptorans stand as one of the great enigmas of dinosaur evolution. They bridge gaps between eras, continents, and clades proof that predation evolved in more ways than one. While northern predators were perfecting the bite, the south was perfecting the reach and claw. And even though their fossils are few and fragmentary, 
each new discovery, from Patagonia to Queensland, brings us closer to understanding how diverse and inventive evolution truly was. They may not have been true raptors, but there was something just as extraordinary, and potentially even more terrifying. Powerful, precise, and utterly unique. Thank you for watching Prehistoric Fact Files. If you enjoyed uncovering the mystery of the Megaraptorans, give the video a like, subscribe for more prehistoric stories, and tell me in the comments which forgotten lineage do you want to see next. But until then, stay curious.